So, if you're in the area, come on over. I'm going to do a quick presentation for you on the 2017 PGA Merchandise Show Product of the Year, the Sabre, something I'm very, very proud of. And in the last year of utilizing this product, we've actually had zero returns, right? So to me, that's a huge, huge applause, right? So to have zero returns for any reason, whether somebody just said, hey, I got it and I didn't like it, or for product defect, for a company to say that they've had zero returns in, in 12 months is, I think, a pretty successful year. So what I'm going to do is just share with you my vision for the Sabre, why I created it, and how it's going to help you. My name is Craig Hocknell. I'm a 20-year PGA golf professional. And I came up with the Sabre because I really wanted help with my own game. I needed to spend more time efficiently, right? So I needed to practice efficiently. I needed to work efficiently. I needed to be with my family efficiently. And so what I did is I said, how can I practice indoors? How can I practice on the road when I'm traveling? And how can my students potentially benefit from something that I come up with? So the one main reason why I came up with the Sabre is I wanted my students to have athletic freedom. I wanted them to swing with reckless abandon. You see on the, on the range, too many people are taking the club back, they're guiding the club face, they're kind of trying to scoop it through. When you put a golf ball down and you try to elevate it and try to loft it in the air, the problem is it's very difficult. It's a small ball, and if you're brand new to the sport, you don't really even know which end is up. So what you do is intellectually, you look at it, you look at the face as a beginner, and you think, success for me is to see that ball fly through the air. So a lot of students will hang back, and they'll scoop, and they'll try to lift that ball up. So I saw that in my students, and I said, no, 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 no. You just need to rip at it. You need to take a full cut at it. You don't need to be guiding it or manipulating it. So I said, the club head has to come off the trainer. So I said, swing with reckless abandon, swing with freedom. Let's get the club head off the trainer. The other benefit to not having a club head on the trainer is you can leave it in your golf bag the entire round because it doesn't count against you in your 14 club limit. So in the rules of golf, you can only have 14 clubs in your bag. And a trainer would count against that with a club head. So another good reason there's no club head on this. I said, I want my students to work on four key elements. Strength, speed, timing, and technique. Now the technique element was really the first one that I thought of. How do I make my students understand proper athletic motion? How do I make them understand how to swing the implement properly and create that explosive impact? Well, in order to do that, you have to understand what's called load and release, right? Just like chopping wood. If I had an ax and I was trying to chop through a log, I could do it efficiently and athletically and cut through that log quickly, or I could do it inefficiently and not cut through that log at all. So to do it efficiently means to load and release. So when you load up energy and get ready to release energy, that's the coolest feeling in the world when you feel like you've created power. Because power is a combination of strength and speed. That's the definition. Strength times speed equals power. Or strength plus speed equals power. Either way, you're getting powerful, right? So if there's power, but you don't have the technique, you, you, you see that on the driving range every day, the massive slice, the guy that looks like his club head speeds over 100 miles an hour, but then he's slicing it out of bounds. So he doesn't have the technique, but maybe he has the strength and the speed. So going back to the technique features, the saber is square. And the reason why it's square is because many different reasons, I'll run through a couple of them. One, when you hand a square shaft or a square grip to someone, they typically grip it correctly without you having to coach them on it at all. Right away, they're going to take their thumb and they're going to put it on top. Now, what the curious thing is when I hand it to avid golfers who have been playing for a long time, they would typically grab it with their thumb on the side because at some point they've had a wicked slice and the coach has told them, turn that thumb all the way over here and that'll kind of take care of that slice for you. The problem is then they don't actually learn how to release the energy and get their, their hand through the shot. So 
Get your thumb on top and learn how to do it correctly. Don't just come up with a Band-Aid solution, right? So the square shape here on the left thumb helps because anatomical neutral and biomechanical proper load happens in this manner. There's a lot of discussion in social media right now about whether you should have a Dustin Johnson bowed wrist or a cupped wrist. Now there are always exceptions, but when I'm talking to you about injury prevention and what your body's designed to do, it's supposed to load and unload this way. That's called anatomical neutral right here. There isn't one bend in either direction. So the square shape makes that extremely logical and extremely easy. On the right hand, I'm a, pro a proponent of the trigger finger. And that trigger finger gets placed exactly on the right side of that flat wall of the saber. So when it's on that side, it also allows you to create a better release motion through the ball. So that's the technique area. The saber also has ball position indicators on it. So on one side of the saber, you lay it down as an alignment tool. Right? You take out your iron or your wood and you place the ball right out off the saber where it says right here, it says ball. So you put the ball there. Then you put your left foot left of the ball. Now if you're going to chip, it's very simple. You just put your right toe where it says chip. If you're going to pitch, move your right toe as a right-handed golfer to pitch, to iron, to wood. So this is a Ben Hogan, Jack Nicklaus single ball position indicator that's right on the saber. Another feature, if you roll it over, now you have these dots. So the dots that are on the side wall of the saber, you can use for putting. So if you put a ball down on the green and you wanted to work on your own stroke, or you want to teach a student, let's say you're a proponent of short back long through, some are a proponent of long back short through, or equal. So you can use the dots to help coach your student on how to do that. So the technique features of the Sabre are fantastic. There's lots of them. And as a coach, I've come up with a hundred different ways to use it. And I have coaches tell me all the time, oh, hey, I came up with this really new, cool way to use the Sabre. Right? So in these models, we have the 2.0 and the LD. That's the long drive and the 2.0. Those are the standard models. You get a little bit smaller as you go to the 1.5 and the 1.0. But what's really, really cool is when you get all the way down here to the little kids version, written right on the side of the saber is the kids pre-shot routine or beginner golfer pre-shot routine. So let's picture this. You've got 20 kids, big circle. All right, Johnny, stand up. Sally, grab your saber. So they grab their saber. What does it say at the top? Uh, it says grip. All right, put your feet together, take your grip. Well, what are you, left-handed or right-handed, Johnny? Oh, you're right-handed, okay, left hand on the bottom, right hand on the top. At this point, they're little, whether they do 10 finger interlock overlap, you're probably not gonna get that serious. The one main thing, though, is you're gonna figure out, tell them where to put that thumb. So that left thumb goes on top, that's like the hot dog, this is the bun, wrap it up, there's your grip. Okay, what's the next one, stance, stance, bow. Pop, All right? So you pop your knees. Too many people when they learn the game of golf will go into some type of a squat. So they lose their posture. So you go pop, drop. It's written right there. The next one is spin. So you spin your body. Now what happens here in the saber is there's a ball inside of there, which I'll explain in a little bit. When you get to the top of your backswing and that ball sets, now this is where the fun begins for these kids. They love to snap it. So they snap it, and the final one is hold, right? So you just went through a pre-swing and in-swing sequence and made it fun. Now, give that kid a saber and give him a soccer ball. Have him go through that routine and watch him smash that soccer ball 40, 50 yards down the fairway. Then you tell him, all right, kids, drop that saber on the ground and run, and don't just pick up the soccer ball. Maybe pick it up and dribble it like basketball, or just like soccer, dribble it back with your feet. Have them working on some fun coordination as they're going out to pick up that ball. So it's a very, very safe and fun way to use the saber in that setting. Now, you take the next size up, which is slightly bigger, and it's red. 
This is for your bigger kids. So if you've got bigger kids that are learning, maybe 12 to 15 year old, they want to learn, they can go through these steps. What about a beginner clinic? You got a beginner ladies clinic, beginner men's clinic. They all get the Saber 1.0 and it says right there, grip, stance, bow, hop, drop, spin, set, snap, and hold. So it's written right on the Saber. Now when we do our ladies classes, we say we're going to give you a two week class. That's it. You're going to be on tour <laughs> in two weeks. No, we say take the saber and for the first week, all I want you to do is use the saber. Go through the steps, work on it, work on it, work on it. And what's really, really important is do not hit a golf ball. If you hit a golf ball, what's going to happen? You're going to top it. You're going to chunk it. You're going to miss hit it. And then you're going to be like this. Oh, no. All right, what's the next sport? What's the next activity that I can do? But if you just swing it and you get it to snap and you get it to snap, you actually get a workout in there too because it's got some weight to it. And then what we do is we bring them back on the second class and we say, all right, ladies, let's go through this routine again. And we do, we give them a little bit of advice. Sometimes instead of a bow, you know, we might get a little bit of a slouch or a little bit of a, instead of a pop, we might get a little bit of a sit. We don't get it exactly right, so we coach them on how to do that. And after about 20, 30 swings with the saber on class two, we give them a seven iron, we tee up the ball just a little bit, and we just watch them rip it. And they, they're not doing this. They're not guiding it. They swing through and that ball takes off and flies through the air. So those are some of the technique features. So it said there's four, right? Technique was one of them. The other one is strength, speed, and timing. So let's talk about the strength features. When you take the heavy end, it's listed right here on the saber, it says heavy. You're going to swing that. Now this is the 2.0, and what it feels like in a 2.0 is, is like you're grabbing two clubs, right? It's about the weight of two clubs. Well, this is called overload training. When you overload and you stretch out, right, you're working on your strength component. Well, if you, if you only worked on strength and only worked on heavy, what happens is you get very slow. You get strong, but you don't have any speed. So what you need is the speed component. You need the underload training. So there's your heavy, right? That's the strength component. Now we go to speed. All you do is flip it over. So now you're holding the light end of the saber. So now you're working on the speed component, right? So what I've got here just to demonstrate a little bit of what we're doing with some partnerships is we actually have a blast motion sensor right here on the Sabre. So one of our new products includes the Sabre Impact Trainer and the blast motion sensor. And then I currently have it set up, hopefully in the time of my talk, we haven't disconnected from Bluetooth. But if I make a swing right here on the stage, Eighty-five miles an hour. You may not have been able to hear that because it's only coming out of the speaker of my cell phone. But if I do another one, I'll swing a little bit slower. See how it flew out over there? Sixty-seven miles an hour. So if I go back here again, swing full speed through there. I'll swing a little faster. ninety three miles an hour right so as I'm training I'm now getting instant feedback to my phone and what it's doing through the blast sensor is it's capturing those repetitions so now as a coach I can look at my history of my students and if they're using the blast sensor and the saber what I can now do is I can say oh your swing speed in your 20 swing practice session is actually faster at 20 swings. Or someone else may be faster at the first four or five swings. So I'm going to train with that person a little bit more on endurance to make sure that they're swinging quickly all the way through. So let's talk about the timing, right? The fourth element. You have strength, speed, timing, and technique. The timing element comes from science again, centrifugal force, right? So in the saber itself, if I take the saber, and I go back to the top of my backswing, there's a little ball in that saber. 
and that ball will drop. Okay, so now I refer to the saber as a communication tool. Not a training aid necessarily, but it's a communication tool. Either the coach uses it to communicate with their student, or the student uses the feedback to help with that out of body, inner body communication where they can feel. My hashtag is make the feel real. Right? So if I go to the top of my backswing and I wait for that pause, if you're watching your student do this, you can see that happen. You can see them not load properly on that trail leg, right? On the backswing, as they go up, you might see them come out of posture and go too straight up in the air. So as you come back, you may also see them overswing. So the ball is at this end. If I keep swinging to that end, where's the ball? It's still over here. How do I know where the top of my backswing is? With the saber, it's easy. You just tilt your wrist, and right there, I know the ball rolled to this end. Now, the timing component of that is where does it snap, right? So if I snap, and let's say I'm fighting a hook, the ball is turning to the left. What's happening is I'm snapping early, and I'm rolling my hands over, and I'm coming in, and that ball's curving to the left. Let's say I come through and I snap late. I come over here. I snap in this area, and you can hear it. You can tell where it's snapping. That's a big slice. Because I've come through impact and then released the energy, that's going to produce a slice. If you release the energy before the ball, that's going to produce a hook. Okay? So as a coach, you can then communicate that with the student. So one other feature is the stripe on top. So if you're very familiar with the 10 positions of the golf swing, and you start in position one, and you go back to position two, Right, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What you'll notice about the saber is that that blue stripe stays on top the entire time if you're moving correctly. If you go back here to position two and you've done that with your wrist, you won't see that blue stripe on top. You'll see the black stripe with the dots. So if you go back to a neutral position here, with full body turn and you start raising up your arms, that blue stripe will come right back to you. So the fact that you don't have a club head allows you to swing with reckless abandon. But the fact that it's square really does give you a sense of where the club face is so that when you're working through these slow motion positions, you can actually understand where the face is. So what I'm going to do is just wrap up with one really, really simple story for you. So, I was a teaching pro for 12 years, and I decided I'm going to quit my job as a teaching pro, and I'm going to go on tour. Everybody wants to do that. I've wanted to play on the PGA Tour since I was four years old, probably. I worked in the, in the golf business for 12 years and said, I'm going to quit my job and go on tour. And you know what I did? In one year, I played some mini tours, and I bounced around. In year two, I got a tour card on the Canadian tour. PGA Tour Canada, and then next year I went to the final stage of PGA Tour Q School and earned a nationwide tour card. So narrowly missing out on a PGA Tour card, because you could still get your full card at that time, I got a nationwide tour card. So one of the ways that I got there was obviously a God-given ability, obviously lots and lots of practice and lots of training. But one of the ways that I got there was honestly by using this, and I'll tell you why. All of my life growing up, I was a pretty good player. For five foot six, my PGA Tour club head speed average is 117 miles an hour right now. I played in the Phoenix Open exactly one year ago, and they clocked my cl average club head speed at that tour event at 117 miles an hour at the age of 42. I just turned 43. I'm actually swinging faster now than I was last year. Not only am I swinging that fast, I'm hitting the ball straighter than I ever have, and here's how this happened. It was totally by accident. I wanted to create reckless abandon and freedom, but I didn't realize how great the square shape was going to be. So I'll show you what happened. I was hitting balls, or I actually wasn't hitting balls, I was just swinging the saber. And I always felt that in the middle of my backswing back here, I could load up pretty neutrally, and I thought that was exactly where you needed to be, which is true. What I didn't find out until using the saber was on my follow-through, as I came through, 
this position on this side was rolled over. So what's the worst thing a really good player fears? It's that big snap hook right at the wrong time. I can't tell you how many tournaments up until I learned this, right under pressure in the worst possible time you'd get that pull hook or that snap hook in the water out of bounds. That doesn't happen to me anymore. And the reason is because now when I release all that energy here, it has a place to go. It goes right here to the exact same location, the exact same symmetrical place on the other side. So a good example of this on tour would be Henrik Stenson. If you watch his follow through, when he goes back and he comes through, boom, right here, right? He finishes right here. So you can just picture him, just picture me as a really tall, good looking Swede, right? So when I come through, boom, I'm right there. But what happens is this anatomical neutral position of the wrist is what happens. So now I look like that. But since I was five years old to 35 years old, when I came through the ball, I did like this, and I rolled it over. And I had a good follow through and a good finish. Why on earth would I ever worry about my finish to hit the ball straighter? Well, at the 117 miles an hour, if you're worried about impact, you're worrying about all the wrong things, right? So. If I create all that speed and I accelerate through and now I have a place to come from, a loaded place, and then I have a place to finish, a fully released place, that place that happens in the middle is now dead straight for me. So at 117 miles an hour going up, I'm now able to hit it straight. So thanks for sitting with me. Thanks for listening to what I have to say about the Sabre. We have so many great new products coming out in the next month. This particular one that I have with me on stage is for strength training. This is our new product for 2018. So it's a weight bar that you take into the gym. So it has all the same features in the square shape, but when you add resistance to it, now you're actually training even more than what this saber can do for you. So thank you very much. My name is Craig Hognall. I appreciate you listening in and hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Mm.